unsalted screws. Okay, so these are three projects you could do in one day. They're very, very easy to build, very low cost, and they're easy to sell if you hit the market right. Let's start out with the first build, which will be this basket. footage for that. I cut the two side pieces at eight and a quarter. Let's keep going. Let's start putting this together. So I start by attaching all the side walls to each other. The 15 inch nails into the eight and a quarter inch. The 15 inch will wrap around the eight and a quarter shorter side. Because the total basket is 15 inches long. Now I am using 5 8 inch 18 gauge brad nails. And also for the win is the Tight Bond 3 glue. This is an exterior glue. It's water resistant. It's good for this because this is probably going to get wet. Especially if my wife gets her hands on it, it will get left outside and stormed on. So I want to make sure it stays together. So I use Tight Bond 3 glue on all of my contact points. Right here I'm just pre-assembling the little A-frame risers that nail actually gets cut out this just makes it easier to assemble to set it i just set it down on top of the work table make it somewhat even in the middle nail the handle down again glue it before you nail it and remember i said that top nail gets cut out you're going to cut the tip off of the top of the handle you don't want that stick out then i use sandpaper to kind of round it over and contour it in accordance with the handle itself. It's not that hard to do because I was using a soft wood. This is actually some cypress I had left over. And here I'm just finishing with some a uh, tongue oil. I love using tongue oil as a finish. It's a good finish especially for something 
like this. Now before I started this project, I did rip the Cypress 2x4 down into actual dimensional size lumber. And you can get two baskets out of one 8 foot 2x4. Now if you're going to sell this basket, I would list it in a community page on Facebook and I would sell it for about $30 per basket. The next thing we're going to build is this owl house. This is not a birdhouse, this is an owl house and this is made out of using only two fence pickets. The owl house, you could easily sell this for 40 to 50 bucks, especially if you do a better job building it than I did. This was my first shot, but it came out pretty good. Three pickets, easy to build, easy to sell. And if I were gonna sell this, I would make sure to highlight the fact that these owls, if you attract owls to your property, they will eat rats, mice, and what we're using them for is to eat voles that are getting in our garden. It was a pain in my katukas to do all of that editing with the text. So I'm gonna do a small video in the corner or somewhere in the screen of me actually talking about this build. So hope you enjoyed the music. I'm gonna to try to do the rest of this audibly because it was a lot of hours upon hours of editing just to get that first build edited. So let's get started. So we have two fence pickets that we're going to glue together. Now we need to glue those together. We need a straight edge on each side. It, it, yeah, I guess I guess he's going to explain Okay, it. so I want to glue these two pickets together, but as you can see, I don't have a straight edge. That's not going to be a good glue up. I need to put a straight edge on at least one side of all of these pickets. Now, if you don't have a joiner, there's a way to do it without a joiner, even a joiner jig. Set your picket or your board against your blade. Take a straight edge. A level works great for this. Put it against the other side of the board. Bring your fence over. Now I'm going to back this board up and I'm going to pull the fence in about an eighth of an inch. I'm going to tighten my fence down. Here's the important step. Pull the level back and when you feed this through, you feed it through at the same rate together all the way through. You don't feed it against the level like this. You have to move the level and the board together at the same time. Allow me to demonstrate. So this is a great way to get a straight edge, especially if you don't have a joiner. This is actually my preferred method. Even though I built a jig, this method is so quick, so easy to use. I use this all the time. So the cut list on my website is pretty detailed that I really don't need to keep explaining what I'm doing each pass, each cut. Just go get the free plans that are on my website. It's in blog format. You can print out the blog if you need to, but it helps me out a little more if you hop on and you just view it for what it is. So the way that I build this is I attach the walls to the floor first. And again, you want to make sure you glue all of your contact points. This is going to be outside, so I'm using the water-resistant Tight Bond 3 glue. If you don't have Tight Bond 3, just use something equivalent. If it's going to be outside, it's obviously going to get wet. And one way to help keep this square while you're nailing up the bottom is to put the door in between the two sidewalls around the top side. 
that helps keep it square makes it a little a little bit easier to control right here i'm gluing up the uh the top to put the roof on it now the top does have a matching slope angle where it meets up to the backer it's about a 15 degree angle on each side and that angle matches the top side of the side walls it's a 15 degree angle you put a 15 degree angle in the front and back of the roof so that when it makes that contact point to the back board there's no gaps there's no voids exposed and if you've made it this far into the video i'm obviously providing something that you enjoy even if you want to criticize it go comment on the video if you really like it like and subscribe I provide a ton of free information that's very useful, especially for beginner type woodworkers. Go check out my website, burnstockdesign.com, where I post free plans as I build them. These three will be available if they're not at the time of posting this video, because it does take some time to put these together, then they will be available within the next few days and I'll make a community post. But I should have it typed up and published before I post this video. So you want to make sure the door can open and close, and that's so that you can seasonally clean out the owl nest. If you don't clean it out, it will get very, very nasty and very, very rotten very, very quickly. The little knob on the bottom just helps to keep it closed throughout the year, and I can easily come, pull the knob down, open it, clean it out, close it back up, and leave it for the next owl or the returning owl who would be very disappointed that it lost its nest, but it will be very, very quick to rebuild it. Again, tongue oil, perfect for something like this. It's already a fence picket. It's already built for the outdoors. This is just added protection and makes it look a whole lot better. Okay, so the next build is this bat house. Now, this detail right here that you may see was just a mistake on my part that I had to fill in because I didn't really want to see the grooves, but I didn't have another panel glued up and I wanted to get this build done because I want to hang this on my property. Now, bat houses can be pretty pricey. If I were to sell this, I would list it at $100. The way that I would sell this is to highlight the benefits of having bats on your property. So bats, love eating mosquitoes. So a lot of people are really leaning towards natural pest control. This is a form of natural pest control along with the owl house. Bats love eating mosquitoes and other flying insects at night. They will tear up a mosquito population. That's why I'm building one on my property. There are a few other things to take into consideration without getting into too much of the murky waters of the a lot of the details that I have to provide on this. I will include all the details you can use as selling points for a bat house on the plans on my website. Feel free to use it to market it. It's good, good, solid information. Without delaying much further at all, let's get into the build of the bat house.
let me interrupt for a second. I need your help on something. I am still working on figuring out how I want this channel to look. If you notice, there are three different types of editing styles in this video. The first one's the basket style, second one will be the Owl House style, and then there's this style, which is just quiet building, and I can give you information at the end. Whichever style you prefer, please comment down below, and I'm not going to interrupt this build anymore. Let's get back into it. So one thing I do need to talk about, even though this is kind of a quiet build part of the video, I'm cutting grooves that are the width of the saw blade. These are cut at 10 degree angles on the inside of each panel and they're very random. This is so the bat has a foothold to climb up into the panel. The reason they're not cut straight is because baby bats will fall out of the house. If you cut it at a 10 degree angle, and this will be included in the plans as part of the research that, you know, something you can provide to the client to let them know, you know, I did a lot of research. I know what I'm talking about. The 10 degree angles help the baby bat to stay inside the house itself and not fall out and get eaten by something or fall out and get injured. And so I actually went just buck wild cutting the middle panel and I cut too many grooves in an area that I didn't want a groove. And that's why you see the areas that are filled in. So just be mindful of that. And don't do what I did. Unless you like that effect and you could just come back and, you know, put them lines in that middle panel. I think it looked pretty cool in the end, but it was unintentional.
And so look, these are really, really, really fun projects to do. They're really easy projects to do. You can knock them out all in a day. I hope you enjoy the projects. All the plans for these will be on my website. If you're subscribed to my newsletter on my website, these will automatically be sent to you. Thank you for the support and I will catch you on the next one.